What to say when you talk to yourself? These are my 2022 interpretations of the book by Shad Helmstetter. Now I'd like to start this discussion via this quote here. When I was quite young, I had a soaring imagination. Long before I learned what we could not do, I dreamed of doing what I knew we could. I could reach out and touch those stars. I could imagine any dream and see it come true. What we are experiencing, and I trust you've experienced this as well, somewhere along our discussions over the years, a great metanoia of mind, going back to how we truly are, and today we will relate it over to self-talk in our conversations. Now we might see this. Perhaps we have experienced this within ourselves. To see what others are doing, how they are behaving, how they are acting, and from there form decisions on how to be, on how to think, on how to act, rather than going inside, going to the world within in imagination, and from there deciding. How to act, how to be, how to express. Now he says, "What adults tell us as children has an incredibly important effect on us. It forms what we believe about most of what is going on around us, and almost everything that we come to believe about ourselves." Some of our programming is obvious. It stands up, gets our attention, and demands our response. But much of our programming is not nearly so apparent. Most of it has been much more subtle. Every day, each of us receives an endless stream of information, appearing as commands, directives, controls, and expectations from others. Now, what I've recognized on this journey, and I trust you have as well, as we have been discussing it through the works of William Walker Atkinson, there is actually only one suggester, and that is ourselves in relation to the seeming commands, directives, information. In other words, we are forming the conclusions, the interpretations, in relation to information. Now, perhaps in earlier stages of the journey, we didn't allow ourselves to think clearly in relation to our imagination. And while it is important to learn different aspects of this world, it's also important to encourage our intuitive inner conversations, ones that are in harmony with our visions, our desires, how we truly want to live. Perhaps if a person encourages excessively the belief that outside information tells them what to live, although a lot of times unconsciously, they begin to look for external motivation, validation, approval. And while it can be helpful in certain points of the journey. External motivation is motivation which comes to you from the outside. Although still, the interpreter is within our self-talk in relation to that information. It is information that we are reflecting upon from our own internal meaning. It appears to influence a change, but however, the influence is inside. It's what we say when we talk to ourselves in relation to that information. That determines it. Now he gives five different methods for self-talk. Number one, this is the self-talk that goes on all the time, although we are usually not aware of it. Silent self-talk. 
We carry on inner conversations with ourselves all day long. These inner conversations are revealing to us about ourselves, what we think about ourselves, how we relate to others, and so forth. As well as the inner conversations are paving our destiny. And what we want is the true inner conversations that are in harmony with what we truly desire to be, our true destiny. And thus, we realize that much of this conversation is unconscious, but yet revealed via the subconscious mind, via how we act, how we behave, and how we relate to others. I had a conversation the other day with someone who knows exactly what it is that they want to do. They seem to have made a decision on a direction that they want to move into. But for some reason, they're not able to, or so it appears, get themselves to do the thing that they really want to do, move forward in that direction. Now, I trust we can all relate to this in some shape or form. However, if they pause for a moment, and I had a conversation with them about this, we discover their self-talk in relation to doing that thing that they truly want to do. This reveals their state of mind, their internal dialogue, their self-talk. And we were able to have a conversation about that self-talk and find what in relation to their experience I had gone through in my experiences in my past in which I could share with them because we say people show up to reveal what's going on within us. And from that perspective, we were able to come up with the idea and specifically the inner conversation that would be ideal, which actually allowed them to move forward with that initiative. So in other words, how they changed as far as their relationship goes with that behavior or moving forward in that direction, which was really them identifying with overly self-critical based thinking perspectives regarding making that action in that direction, as we had made peace with it, they automatically did it. They took that step. Now, this was a business decision. They were self-condemning themselves through their self-talk because they thought that others would not accept them by putting themselves out there on social media. They wanted to do it. Now, upon reflection, we realize that others show up to play the theater within us. And that's allowing us to maintain this internal locus of control. And by changing their relationship with how they go about doing that particular activity via having a conversation with themselves, such as people show up ready to receive the knowledge and wisdom that I have acquired on my journey. They are ready to receive it. They found themselves excited and stimulated to move in that direction and take that initiative. Now, it required some reflection to bring to conscious awareness the silent self-talk. And we were able to do this by staying really present to understanding what that emotion that they were experiencing, which they were interpreting as fear, was revealing to themselves. And they were able to express that in a dialogue in which it made sense then from a certain perspective that because of their thinking patterns, they were holding themselves back. But as we made peace with that thinking pattern, as we looked at that same situation, circumstance in their life, from a different perspective, they were able to see it for how it truly is, which is in harmony and in contribution to their vision. And they were able to then engage in an inner dialogue which allowed them to move forward with that initiative. Number two, he speaks of self-speak. Anything you say out loud to yourself or to someone else about yourself or about anything else is part of your self-talk. So a large part of this book is bringing awareness to your self-talk. 
these inner conversations are happening all day long and we are dialoguing with ourselves. Sometimes we're conjuring up in our imagination people from our past, imaginary people, and having conversations with them. This important discovery of these conversations reveal what we are saying to ourselves and what we say to others, how we communicate. One of the things that helped me along this journey, working with this aspect here, self-speak, is observing how I communicate. And having studied direct response marketing, consultative selling, and copywriting for many years in my entrepreneurial journey, and continuing to do so because I see it as a continuous journey, I'm able to observe, based on what I say to others, what's going on within myself and what I am creating as far as my experiences in life. So thus, we want to value, understand, and reflect upon, be more mindful on our communication with others. Let's go back to the beginning here. It says, what adults tell us as children has an incredibly important effect on us. Before the child has gone through the experience at perhaps a later stage of their life, in which they reconnect back, metanoia of mind, to the truth that the inner expresses the outer. During that period, we want to ensure that we are allowing that journey to be as facilitating as possible by observing our communication with them to instill certain ideas that when they awaken from what they thought was a world in which they were at the effect of and then realize that they are the cause of it, they would actually need less going in to their subconscious, identifying belief systems, interpretations, perspectives, and so forth, which are not true and in harmony with how they really are, and make peace with them. This is a great service that we could do for others, for friends, for family, for business relationships, personal relationships, speaking and relating with others, is to observe our communication, understanding that perhaps they might be interpreting what we are saying from the perspective of limiting and disempowering. Now, we get better at it with practice. And what we want to do is change within ourselves our internal dialogue. We'll go through the process of how to go about doing it from the perspective of how he shared it so that our self-speak and what we say when we speak to others is one that inspires them to realize that they are reflecting upon the five sensory experience and from the inner interpretations forming conclusions. So we speak in a way that is natural and authentic to our own realization, thus living the philosophy via our thinking patterns, which is also apparent in our behaviors, and harmonizing them and also harmonizing the thinking and feeling, as we've been discussing in Sunday's video, feeling is the secret, in relation to, we use some alchemical reference, the internal marriage of the Red King and the White Queen. Now, there's an important aspect to it as well, which is the behavioral aspect. We've got the thinking, we've got the feeling, and we've got the willing. Now, our behaviors and what we speak reveals the truth of what's going on within ourselves. That's the reality. The truth is inside. The reality is inside in our own mind. As we say, as we discuss in the Kabbalion, all is mind. The universe is mental and body is an expression of mind. Behavior is an expression of mind. What we communicate when we communicate to others is an expression of mind. And not to condemn and shame ourselves, rather make peace with and understand. And that's what's happening. So every time we write, every time we speak, every time we act, 
I would like to encourage this idea, which is something that has been spoken about by the ancients for thousands of years, which is that it's revealing what's going on in mind. Next, we have self-conversation. Self-conversation is talking to yourself out loud and holding down both ends of the conversation all by yourself. Sometimes I tend to talk out loud to myself when I'm working on tasks and projects, when I'm by myself, sometimes even in the shower. This is a helpful way of dialoguing and building a relationship with yourself. Now, I made a video three or four weeks ago, I'll put a link in the description to it, in which I spoke about how I travel into imagination with myself, me and myself as my own best friend. And we explore different aspects of mine together, revealing aspects within myself that I'm identifying with so we can have a dialogue together and understand and make peace with. So related to what I brought up a little earlier, we have self-right. He says, self-right is the kind of self-talk that you write out word for word for yourself. So what we write, how we write, and again, I'm so grateful to have learned so much from direct response marketing, copywriting, and consultative selling, which is why I also recommend all throughout the videos, if you feel inspired to do so, to study those areas. Because that kind of communication not only helps us to communicate with others in a harmonious way, but also helps us understand about ourselves, communicate to ourselves. So when we write, and I enjoy writing, and these videos are a form of expression of thoughts that I write to myself as a result of working with this information and continuously working with this information. It reveals my inner dialogue, my self-talk. And when working with this understanding, we are talking about ourselves in relation to. And when we change our conversations to be more harmonious with others and environment, information, and so forth, we will notice the inward harmony or the inward reconciliation. That's another important aspect of the alchemical marriage of the Red King and the White Queen the allegory, the inward reconciliation. We're reconciling within. As we reconcile what we express in our words, what we write to what's going on within and make peace with this, we notice that our communication tends to be more harmonious. Now, this is very powerful for those in a leadership position, very powerful for relationships. As I had observed myself reflecting upon the self-write, what I wrote, how I speak as well, the self-conversation, and what I say to myself about people, environment, circumstance, and information to myself, bringing awareness even to what I am saying unconsciously, and changing those internal conversations to be more in harmony with how I truly want to live, I noticed that my relationships became more harmonious. I noticed that I would feelingly relate deeply with people where I once felt I would never relate to them. I would never understand them. What I noticed is that friendships were reconciled. I noticed that, as we had brought up before, the enemy within, the thinking patterns in relation to people, what I was conjuring up in my own imagination as enemy attributes projected outwards on this five sensory experience was reconciled and it appeared as harmonious relationships, masterminds, conversations, and so forth. Business deals became more harmonious. People showed up in a mutually respectable, fair, mutual exchange to do business together. We would connect our resources, our assets. We would combine these things in interesting ways to create new revenue streams for our businesses, improve operational inefficiencies, come up with creative ways of going into 
new markets, finding collaborative ways to optimize different aspects of the entrepreneurial journey, from productivity to communication with team, clients, vendors. The power was really, if we go back to the source, inside. So let's go back to the beginning here. He said, When I was quite young, I had a soaring imagination. Long before I learned what we could not do. See, we learn those things. It's not possible. I can't do those things. He said, I dreamed of doing what I knew we could. I could reach out and touch those stars. I could imagine any dream and see it come true. Now, this is very symbolic here. I could reach out and touch those stars. Everything is in harmony. Everything is in connection. And we enable those connections by enabling it via our thinking patterns, our self-talk. And as mentioned, our self-write, self-conversation, self-speak, and even silent self-talk reveal. And now something else that I like here, he calls it tape talk. Recorded self-talk that is played to yourself. If you're a student of my subconscious mind program, and you've heard me mention this all throughout our conversations, and actually at the end of each video over the last few years, I've been including an auto-suggestion. When I look back at my life, I realized that certain information that I learned from others, such as these books, other videos, audio programs, podcasts, in which they were saying things a certain way, in which I listened to it and identified with those thinking patterns, became my own. And reality began to, and continues to, express accordingly. So, at one point in the journey, I said to myself, what if I start just recording my own messages who else better to talk to ourselves and know intuitively within ourselves how we truly want to be other than ourselves, knowing that there's one suggester, while there might be others that inspire us, the reality is that they're inspiring us back to finding our true inner voice. And as we find this true inner voice, we want to capture this information and perhaps record it into an audio or make videos. Certainly, you could share it with others like I do. And you can play them to yourself to reconfirm that thinking pattern that was brought forth and as a result of communicating to yourself in a way that makes sense to you. The power of self-talk and working with the power of the subconscious mind is communicating to yourself in a way that you listen to yourself. And what I mean by that is there's certain words, there's certain conversation styles, there's certain voice tonality, and there's certain distinct ways of communicating with yourself that allows yourself to truly listen and encourage recognizing that as you do this through the tape talk, as he refers to, recorded self-talk, recorded auto-suggestion, you actually find yourself behaving that way and experiencing reality from those perspectives. So thus it has been one of the most powerful ways of transformation that I have found when working with the subconscious mind. Now, he describes five levels of self-talk. Let's talk about these, but before we do this, here are five more important attributes we want to keep into consideration, be it in our conversations that we carry within ourselves. And we have determined that conversations reveal and by ordering the conversations, we can encourage certain behaviors, thinking patterns, ways of being, which expresses because that is what we are imagining and what we imagine and identify with. And through this discussion from the process of conscious self-talk becomes the experiences in our lives. So five important aspects. Number one is behavior. 
So I say, so much of what reveals or expresses as success is how we act, what we do or not do, and what we want is the behaviors that are in harmony with the vision. You'll see it. This is how you know you are being authentic. This is how you know you are being genuine. Via the heart, the mind, and the will. They're aligned. They're one. Body is an expression of mind. Behaviors are an expression of mind. And what we notice as we encourage the accurate and true harmonious internal dialogue by building a relationship with ourselves and communicating to ourselves in a way where we truly understand and relate to ourselves in a way that is in harmony with the goals, the visions, the definite chief aim, as we've been discussing last week, what we will notice is the behaviors of congruence, how we communicate, how we express ourselves. And this is very powerful for entrepreneurs, artists, day-to-day -day life. So if we see an incongruence in our behaviors, no need to condemn ourselves, we bring to the surface our thinking patterns. We understand ourselves and we realize that body is an expression of mind. And by making peace with certain thinking patterns and communicating to ourselves, such as, for example, a person decides that they are going to commit to their entrepreneurial success. And as a result of it, they realize that putting out some information on social media allows them to acquire those clients that they're looking for. This was an inspiration that they found. Now, the next step is to create that channel and express. But they find some internal resistance or procrastination within themselves. We don't condemn ourselves. We look at this behavior and we say, what within me is creating these theatrical experiences on what's going on here? And maybe they might discover that they're afraid to communicate. They're afraid to authentically express and what they only need to do is go beyond that mental chatter, connect to the true inner voice, and realize the truth. Love is the law. And that what we have learned in our lives, that what we have experienced, other people want to know about it. Certainly, I have received many emails, DMs, so many of them all throughout the years as a result of sharing my own experiences in these videos as a result of reflecting upon my reference experience in regards to working with this information. And such is the case with many that I spoke with as well, who also, you could say, put themselves out there and share the information. And they do it in their own unique and distinct way. And I certainly encourage it because we find that others show up to hear it the way we authentically express it. It is our art. If a person sees disconnect in this and they see procrastination or hesitation to express authentically from the perspective of love in relation to sharing with others to benefit the lives of others, and they know they truly want to do this, then perhaps they can create auto-suggestion that goes something like this. Like I say, I realize that people show up every day to receive my understandings. I realize that all experiences in my life from my past are valuable. I have unique stories, ideas, perspectives, and a distinct style of communication in which people resonate with it. Those that are ready to receive this information from the perspective and relationship of my style of artistic expression show up. This excites me, and I find myself automatically expressing. I notice that I'm brought into a deeper degree of flow. I'm able to overcome perceived challenge because I recognize that the challenge is within myself as a result of bringing awareness onto the inner conversations that reveal how I relate to my behaviors. I'm able to make peace with those thinking patterns and allow myself to authentically express accordingly. Thus, I understand to a deeper degree 
the meaning of transmutation. As we had discussed this a few weeks ago, I'll put a link in the description to this. If a person feels tense energy, resistance energy, fear energy, that energy can be transmuted over to creative energy. And such is the case of ancient alchemy, the transmutation. Number two, feelings. Every action we take is first filtered through our feelings. How we feel about something will always determine or affect what we do and how well we do it. So we want to do it from a state of mind. That's one with a vision. We want to feel one with our artistic expression. As we have discussed, feeling is the secret. Through the self-talk and inner dialogue, we can bring ourselves into that state of mind in which we genuinely feel the oneness with our behaviors or our artistic expression. From there, we will notice that everything seems to move in harmony. If you're in public speaking, you'll notice that your words seem to flow. You'll notice that people relate to you harmoniously. They might even say things to you like they could feel your authenticity. They feel that they can relate to you. They feel understood, and you also feel understood. And then there is a harmonious mastermind. Number three, attitudes. Your attitudes are the perspectives from which you view life. And so when it comes to attitude of mind, the inner conversations, the internal dialogue, the self-talk reveals our attitude of mind. And by simply choosing a conversation within yourself in a way where you listen to yourself to transcend past the overthinking, and you get better at it with practice, communicating with yourself. That's why we're revisiting this book. And we will continue to revisit this book because we discover as a result of working within the information, applying the information, that we can understand it even more so. And we understand it to higher degrees. So at this degree, we find that certain sequencing of words in a way that resonates thinking feelingly allows us to ascend past one state of mind and into another state of mind, another attitude of mind. And that attitude of mind becomes our view of life. And from there, the behaviors and the expressions flow. Number four, beliefs. And so beliefs also determine and reveal our attitude of mind. All of this information is designed to reveal your true and authentic beliefs on how you really are and encourage them via self-talk. If the self-talk is not in alignment with how we truly are, then we can have a thinking, feeling, intuitive conversation with ourselves and bring ourselves via our self-talk into a paradigm or attitude of mind or state of mind that encourages certain belief systems that are related to it. We believe what we are programmed to believe. So always remember this and going back to the start of our conversation. At this stage of the journey, we recognize that rather than looking outside for a suggestion opinion, and although the suggestion and opinion can be helpful, provided that it resonates with who you are truly, deeply, that's why we say feeling is the secret. You have to intuitively be able to relate symbolically from inside in relation to the experiences in the outer world. That's the metanoia of mind, the inner expressing as the outer. When we do this and we continue to encourage this way of being, we look beyond what he refers to as programming. Perhaps there are perpetuated belief systems, ideologies, ways of thinking that seem to restrict and throttle who you really are. And so you'll be able to discern. You'll notice this. You'll get better at it with practice. After a period of time, you'll notice that it'll be easy to discern. 
I've noticed this with myself. When I come across information from various sources, I'm able to real-time discern and see which element and perspective in relation to the different nuances in the communication, what is true and harmony with who I am. And so now let's discuss what he categorizes as the five levels of self-talk. This represents a person's evolution in working with self-talk to bring themselves to a point where they're able to maintain the position of self-suggestion in relation to love, harmony, so they could live in the outer aspects of the life from the perspective of that internal love and harmony based true self-talk that's found within by ascending past the programming and mental chatter that is not true and in harmony with how they really are. And here's the key. You know it. You know it. These have been my experiences. Ultimately, we find it within ourselves. We find what is true within ourselves. And going back to the beginning here to echo it, he said, when I was quite young, I had a soaring imagination. So we know that how we truly are is one of soaring imagination. He says, long before I learned what we could not do, I dreamed of doing what I knew we could do. So we ask ourselves the question, what do we truly love? What do we truly want to do? How do we truly want to live and encourage those thinking patterns in relation to via the self-talk and do it in a way that resonates, that actually brings you into, which then allows you to express behaviorally, conversationally, artistically, in a way that is true to you. And as mentioned, if we come across some programming in which there seems to be some resistance in regards to expression, and I've seen this in myself in the entrepreneurial journey and in public speaking and communication, I just go in and understand my self-talk in relation to the experience, and I find the true and accurate self-talk. And by having that conversation with myself, I'm able to then express authentically. And so he says, I could reach out and touch those stars. I could imagine any dream and see it come true. So level one, he says, self-talk represents everything from our simplest misgivings to the worst fears we have about ourselves. We can relate this over to mental chatter. These internal dialogues are brought to the surface in which we can question them. We say, you know what, this is not really how we truly want to live. And if it's not how we truly want to live, then we say, okay, I want to think how I truly want to think. And perhaps then a person goes into level two. Level two self-talk is categorized by words such as I need to, I ought to, I, or I should. So a person is no longer identifying with certain thinking patterns in regards to fears or misgivings about themselves, but they realize that some change needs to occur. Then a person goes into level three, and he says, Level three self-talk is the first level of self-talk that works for you instead of against you. So we determine within ourselves what is for us rather than against us. You make that call. He says, in this level, you recognize the need to change, but also you make the decision to do something about it. You state the decision in present tense, though the change has already taken place because there's a part of you in level two here that said, you know what? I'm not interested in living this way that I was living before. I ought to change it. Something needs to change. And then from there, as you encourage it, he says, level three is characterized by the words, I never, or I no longer. And so then a person has made a decision. They're now choosing something that is an alternative to that past experience. And so we go into level four, in which he states, Level four self-talk is categorized by the words, I am. I am organized and in control of my life. Now a person starts to communicate this way, although they might not say, I am. 
they may say things like, I realize, or I recognize now, or I find myself. They communicate to themselves in a way that implies that they are that person right now. So this is where it gets very individualized. Certainly a person can say, I am organized and in control of my life. But as I've been working with this information and working with others, I realize that communication is individualized. And so we want to find within ourselves the communication style, the words, and how we sequence the words that implies, because the key word is it implies. And as we've been discussing throughout our conversations, on the day-to-day journey to realizing the vision, we're always saying I am in relation to the different aspects of the journey. Although most of what we say I am too is unconscious, and thus we're working with self-talk here to bring awareness as to what we are saying I am too that is unconscious, revealed by the power of the subconscious mind. And although we might not directly say I am, it's more specifically what we identify with. And there are many ways of saying I am without actually saying I am and identifying with the programming. A person might say, this is just how it is. That's another form of saying I am. So we find then different ways of self-talk categorized by or suggested in relation to I am to imply that we now are that person that is ideal and harmonious in regards to that specific change or changes in different aspects of the journey. One of the things that helped me with this, and I had mentioned this last week in Tuesday and Thursday's video, is to link everything over to my definite chief aim and to link my definite chief aim over to everything else. I recommend watching those videos. Because then what I can do is I can carry on an inner conversation with myself as needed. A lot of my day, I'm doing my thing doing my day-to-day tasks, having fun. And working with this information has allowed me to become more present over the years to, as needed, observe my self-talk, perhaps at the end of the day, which also relates to what we talked about in Sunday's video, the backwards review. I recommend watching that video. We discussed it from two perspectives. We want to develop the ability to go through and review our day or our experiences And ask ourselves, what are we communicating to ourselves in relation to those experiences that bring forth those experiences, revealing our state of mind, our attitudes of mind, the programming, identification, belief, identification, etc., also revealed in our behaviors? And if we see lack of congruence, we have an opportunity then, via self-talk, to make peace with it. And so now let's go a little deeper into this. Important aspects of self-talk. As we've identified, much of our self-talk is unconscious. We're not even aware of it. By simply suggesting to ourselves that we can be more aware, I am now more aware of my self-talk, you'll start to notice it more so. Number two, at times our self-talk comes in feelings that we might not have the ability to put into words. That's fine. I recommend taking a moment and you can have a conversation with yourself and discover what's going on with it. You can also have a conversation with someone that you trust, a mastermind partner. And through the harmonious interaction with yourself or the other person, you can bring to the surface the understandings. This has been very helpful for me because then I discover the recurring thinking patterns that until I did that process, they seem to play out again and again and again as the same emotional reactivity. And then having brought awareness as to what I was thinking in regards to, I was able to change my self-talk, select a more harmonious self-talk, thus make peace with certain beliefs, thinking patterns, aspects that I was identifying with that were once unconscious. And upon making peace with them, I no longer had that emotional reactivity to that particular experience. Number three, the subconscious mind expresses self-talk that we identify with. So 
what we're really looking for is the self-talk that we are identifying with, that which we say I am too, both consciously and unconsciously, revealed in our behaviors, how we relate to ourselves, how we relate to others, people, environment, circumstance, information. We have the opportunity to discover this, and you don't have to do this all day long. Dedicate some time, perhaps, at the end of the day or at the end of the workday. For me, I like to reflect upon it in certain increments throughout the day. During some breaks, at the end of the night, at the end of my workday, during the morning routine, sometimes I do it while I'm at the gym. And I like to be very lighthearted about this. I don't want to overthink because that's going to not allow me to connect to my true inner voice. And that's going to be very important as we progress through this video. We'll talk about that in a moment. Also, because we learned our programs from people around us, it is natural that we also pass the same kind of programming onto others. And we might not be aware that we're doing this. We're passing it on to our children. We're passing it on to people that we encounter each day in the workplace, personal life, business life. We want to be aware of the kind of programming that we are passing on. Understand that we all go through the same journey. Certainly in the earlier stages of my life and my childhood, I had experiences that we could say we wouldn't want any child to experience. And it took me a great length of time because of the deep rootage of and the ideologies and belief systems that I had identified with to make peace with it. And I wouldn't want anyone going through that. But for some of us, it takes time, and for some of us, it can happen faster. However, one of the main reasons why we do this is to be in service to others so that we can also encourage our team, our family, our friends as to the true thinking patterns that are in harmony and contribution to their goals, their visions. And you'll find that, as I had mentioned last week, people show up in harmony and contribution to your definite chief aim, and you show up in harmony and in contribution to their definite chief aim. Now let's go back here for a moment. Level five. This level of self-talk has been spoken about for thousands of years. It is inspired by the ancients. It is the self-talk of oneness with spirit. You may hear me refer to this often as the true inner voice. I believe and I found within myself, and I've had many conversations with others who also found that within themselves there was the true voice, intuition, sometimes we can call it the sixth sense, in which a person really understands the different aspects of the journey and they relate it to the truth within themselves. Now, we find that as we work with self-talk, and make peace, reconcile, we could say, thinking patterns, beliefs in relation to ourselves, others, environment, circumstance, information. As we continue this journey, we will notice this. We will notice this level five self-talk. And this level five self-talk will be expressed authentically in how we communicate with others, what we say, and ourselves. A lot of times you'll find when you're operating from this level five self-talk that you expressed and people said, wow, how did you know what to say? You said exactly what I needed to hear. And you say, what did I say? And what, and what you'll notice is that during those times you were autotelic. And what the ancients also talked about, the reality of unity is revealed. So what was creating the separation then? It was the programming, certain beliefs, certain attitudes of mind, certain emotional reactivity in which we have the opportunity to make peace with, the behaviors. So all of these are indicators. And so here he gives a nice checklist. We can work with some of them or all of them, whatever feels resonant with you, to integrate self-talk that is in harmony and do it in a way that speaks to yourself. Learn how to you'll get better at it with practice. Communicate with yourself. Build a relationship with yourself. Watch the video I did on the relationship with myself in imagination. 
And we'll certainly be discussing this in the upcoming videos. Speaking to yourself in a way that really connects you to the level five self-talk. The experience for me is I noticed that I can speak to myself. I can have a conversation with myself in regards to my experiences and then realize that the true inner voice speaks of love, harmony, and I can ascend past mental chatter. It was very helpful for me to work with others to do this. I certainly encourage it. Then eventually I found that I was able to do it with myself. I would sit down and say, okay, here's this experience that I'm having. I'm certainly reactive to it, and that's fine. What can I learn from this? What is this revealing about myself? And then I start this conversation with myself, and maybe a minute or two into the conversation, three or four minutes in, things start to make sense. Ideas, hunches, inspiration, unique perspectives are revealed within. So here are some self-talk checklist items that he shared, which can be very helpful. Number one, is your self-talk stated in the present tense? So as mentioned, we could say, I am this, I am that. We could say, I realize. You can say, I found myself realizing that I am this way. You can combine it. You can stack it. The main thing is to be able to communicate to yourself that implies, the key word is implies, that you are that person right now. To bring yourself into that reality, that's one, with that vision of how you truly are. Number two, is it specific? So this is where I like to weave specific and generality together to really get into the transformation, which is a specific transformation. But what we find is it changes, like with all transformation, multiple different areas of our life. So for example, I might say, in regards to doing the thing that I really want to do, in relation to self-confidence, I might say, I find myself actually living my philosophy because it is important for me to share with others based on reference experience. Thus, I place myself in situations to acquire reference experience. Upon working with my philosophy and bringing forth my results, people show up ready to receive the information, the experiences that I had, and my distinct perspectives in relation to those experiences. So what might seem as more of a lengthy conversation is actually how I naturally talk to myself to be specific in relation to confidence. Because that's what, to me, implies self-confidence. A person that says that this is what they're going to do, and they go and do it. And they don't look around to see what others are doing, but rather look within themselves and see what is true and in harmony with the vision and then act accordingly. So for me, that sentence implies that. Maybe the case for you, you can find your own version of it. Number three, does it get the job done without creating any unwanted side effects? So I believe when working with self-talk and instilling beliefs within ourselves, we want to ensure that they are spirit of harmony, love-based beliefs for the long term. So that's why I always like to ensure that my self-talk, new self-talk, which, by the way, as you connect within, you'll find the, the self-talk from level five will naturally imply benefit for you, others, divine and evolution. Is it easy to use? Now, easy to use is subjective. If you communicate to yourself in a way that you listen to yourself, understand yourself, and allow yourself to communicate to yourself in a way that you naturally communicate to yourself. All throughout the videos, I share how I naturally communicate to myself. The auto suggestions that I share at the end of the videos is how I suggest to myself because that's how I speak to myself because I like to use different nuanced distinctions and say things from many different perspectives because I find that to be relatable for me. And one of the reasons why I find it to be relatable is it allows me to transcend past certain thinking patterns in which you can call that overthinking and really get into the subconscious mind because that is what is expressing as the behaviors and the outer aspects of life. Is it practical? What does that mean to you? For me, it's results. Is this self-talk in harmony and in contribution with my definite chief aim, with my results? Number six, is it personal and is it honest? So thinking feelingly, we want to communicate 
thinking feelingly to ourselves in a way that is distinct, individualized, and resonant with how we are, how we see reality, and how we truly want to be. And number seven, he says, does your self-talk ask enough of you? So consider this journey one of higher levels of realization. As we continue to work with this information and bring forth our results, our successes, we also go through the journey of internal realization of how we truly are and how we truly want to express. So one can say then, when you bring forth success or a vision or results working with self-talk, we find inspiration and we stimulate ourselves into higher levels of realization, more accurate self-talk that's in harmony and contribution to the vision. The beautiful thing about this that I found is that as you go through this journey of working with this information, what you will notice is that you will find unique, distinct, creative ways of expressing, communicating, artistically expressing, which others will resonate with they will find inspiration in your communication style. And what happens then is it inspires others to also go down the journey of doing this as well. I find a lot of inspiration in listening to others communicating about this information from their own unique and distinct perspectives. And I enjoy, as I mentioned this many times throughout the videos, I enjoy having conversations with others that don't see reality the way I do. I enjoy having conversations with others that have very distinct and even polarizing views on reality. And while I might not necessarily want to integrate certain thinking patterns into my way of being, I want to understand how thinking patterns create reality. And so what I find is when I connect with others who have different perspectives, different views of looking at reality, and really seek to understand, as Stephen R. Covey had put in The Seven Habits, seek first to understand, then to be understood. I actually understand myself better. I feel understood inside. Because then what I find is that I'm able to work with some attribute of what was shared or some information in a way that relates to my own goals, definite chief aim, etc. So I find then people inspire me and I inspire others. That might actually be a good self-talk to integrate as I have integrated that in my past and thus experience reality from this perspective. So a lot of the changes that have occurred within myself over the years, I credit to self-talk and not a suggestion. And I believe one of the reasons why is because I like to communicate and I like to use words. And words have a lot of symbolic meaning to me. And while a word can have many different meanings to different people, that is why it's also important to use the words that are in harmony and contribution with the feeling of how we truly want to be. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with a stimulating auto-suggestion to encourage the self-talk that further reveals how you truly are, how you truly want to be, and allowing you to express automatically. We could say, I realize every day the importance of communicating to myself from the perspective of love. I realize that from the essence, love is who I am. And from this understanding and perspective, I'm able to reveal the self-talk, which I encourage, allowing me to be how I truly am and express accordingly to inspire others to do the same. Upon reflection, I realize that this is increasing every day. Upon deeper realization, I realize that I am the suggester. And from the internal suggestion of perpetual love and truth, further self-talk is revealed to help me understand thinking patterns, perspectives, ideas in relation to people, environment, circumstance, and information. To further encourage the thinking patterns in relation to those relationships from the perspective of love. As I continue to do this, I bring forth unique, distinct, and individualized ways of communicating to myself to further encourage how I truly am. 
If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.